And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. So should you buy a house right now or should you wait? That is one of the biggest questions out there, especially for millennials looking to become first time homeowners. But right now there's also a debate. There's two sides and they're both on the opposite sides of the spectrum. On one hand, you have non-real estate professionals like Elon Musk who says commercial real estate is in big trouble and the housing market is gonna be next. And that got a lot of responses from the media about him being completely wrong. Prices are gonna stay fairly high. It's gonna be a real affordability crisis for the millennial generation. Many people wanna move and they just can't do it because prices aren't gonna come down in this housing market correction. It's the weirdest housing market correction I've ever seen. By the way, that was not the grown up version of Linguini from Ratatouille, if you remember. Instead, that was the CEO of the real estate giant Redfin who disagreed with Elon, but there's also real estate professionals like Barbara Corcoran who has a massive real estate portfolio, one of the people on Shark Tank, and she also says commercial real estate will be in big trouble, but that the residential housing market should be just fine. Well, whose side do you come down on? Oh, definitely, there's no relationship between the commercial and the residential, and the residential is starting to rebound, I agree, but the commercial is in trouble, yeah. Okay, so Elon's wrong. I, I, uh, of you course don't he's wrong yet again, but he's cocky. And sometimes that counts for more. Now, of course, the comment section disagrees with Barbara saying that of course she'd say that. She's invested in a lot of real estate and she's biased. And that makes sense. If you're a real estate investor, you have a financial incentive to tell the world that real estate is gonna be doing just fine. So. I don't know what to believe because I'm not a real estate expert, I'm not an agent and I'm not a professional and I don't know why you'd be watching my opinion, but I do wanna to get to the bottom of this question. So I wanna share with you the data and what I found. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance and stay for the debate on housing, which is sort of split down the middle. It's 50-50 like this $10 bill split into two fives. Also, I don't know why I did that. That was unnecessary. Now, the one thing that everyone agrees on is that commercial real estate is in big trouble and that values could soon collapse by as much as 40 to 60%, if not more. Is real estate the next shoe to drop in the aftermath of what we saw with the banks? Well, there's a new anxiety tonight surrounding the multi-trillion dollar commercial real estate industry. So Moody's analysts find that nearly a third of office buildings in its top 80 metros could be, quote, obsolete. The experts say that billions of dollars in commercial real estate loans are due this year. Morgan Stanley thinks prices could fall as much as 40%. Over the next few years, $1.5 trillion worth of loans will be due before the end of 2025. And the space that's struggling the most right now is specifically commercial office buildings because after the pandemic, a lot of people chose to work from home. In a city like San Francisco, for example, there's over 27 million square feet of empty office spaces. To get an idea of how big that number is, San Francisco's biggest office space is the Salesforce Office Tower, which has 1.4 million square feet of space. So there's about 20 of those towers worth of empty space in San Francisco alone. But this is also true across the entire country. In the most recent data on vacancy, for example, you can see that before the start of the pandemic, we were here. But at the end of last month, the average occupancy across 10 major cities was still less than 50% of what it used to be. When people don't wanna to return to their office, there's less of a reason to have an office, which means there's less demand to invest in one, which means values will have to come way back down. And the people that will be most affected by this are gonna be the smaller banks that gave out the loans to buy these commercial real estate properties. Do you know who's gonna take it in the gut? Are the banks, the regional banks, the small banks who have financed it. And a lot of the different funds have come out now and they're late on their mortgage payments to their lenders. And that's not a good sign. I don't see that turning around. I think it's gonna be a bit of a bloodbath before it gets better. And that means we'll likely see more bank runs and more bank failures because in this $20 trillion space, 80% of the outstanding loans are actually financed by those smaller banks. And if their borrowers choose not to make their payments or they default like some of them have already started to, that could mean those banks will have to sell off their collateral. We learned this year exactly what that collateral was, which are bonds. If those banks are forced to sell their bonds at a loss because interest rates have now gone up, that means they won't be able to fulfill on all of their withdrawals and they won't have all of their customer deposits, which means some of them could need to be bailed out again. 
And all of that is happening right now. So here's how this problem has already started to affect all of us already, because even though we're most likely not real estate moguls like Ben Mala, who owns shopping complexes and apartments, but this is still something that we technically have indirect exposure to, especially if you invest inside of your 401k through something called REITs. Those are real estate investment trusts, which are essentially companies that own office buildings that lease them out to other companies. What I really like about REITs is that they usually pay us a higher dividend income. Now, Old Realty, for example, which is one of the stocks I own, pays me 5% per year. What's nice about that is that it's really high, but the downside of that is that this income is taxed, not at capital gains rates, but usually like personal income, which is a higher tax rate than normal with qualified dividends. Anyway, that's a side note, but the point is, commercial real estate is already starting to affect ordinary investors, and my stocks in the REIT space are already down significantly this year, because investors are anticipating commercial buildings to drop in value so they're selling off their stocks. But the question is, will the damage just be contained here into the smaller banks, or will it spread, especially to residential housing? Here's sort of where it got confusing to me, because Elon Musk says that the commercial real estate space will eventually start to affect housing, and that got a lot of responses from people that disagreed with him, including the CEO of Redfin, who actually made a good point. He tweeted back at Elon saying that the loss in demand for commercial real estate is what's driving demand for residential real estate. People who work from home need more space at home. Sales volume is down because inventory is down. Today, home prices increased for a second straight month, referring to this data right here, the Case-Shiller National Home Price Index. And his argument against Elon kind of makes sense to me. He says that home values don't necessarily have to come down because all of that demand could be absorbed by the people that have left their office and instead prefer to work from home. Now overall, it is true that we're selling less homes this year than we did last year, and that metric is down because people are locked in to a really low interest rate. According to Goldman Sachs, 99% of borrowers have an interest rate that's less than the current rate, and 72% are locked in at a rate that's less than 4%. That means people are locked in to where they are. They don't wanna sell their house just to go shopping for a rate of six and a half to 7%, and they don't wanna buy a house they feel is overly expensive. Now, it's true. Even though home values have gone down for seven straight months now, they are still down only 2.2% from their peak. So even though home values have come down, it is still more expensive to buy a house this year than it was last year. In fact, if you put 20% down, the average payment for the average house is $280 a month higher this year than it would have been last year. So it seems like the real estate experts are right so far about what's happening to residential real estate, but I still couldn't help but think, Elon Musk is a really smart guy. He understands the difference between residential and commercial. He must also know that when the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, that home values will come back up. So I don't wanna dismiss his opinion and just be one of those people that's like, Elon Musk bought Twitter and he lost so much money. He's dumb, he's not even an expert. There has to be more about why he believes what he believes. And the more I looked, the more I saw. Because what drives home values are interest rates and the supply. But there's another thing that is also driving prices, which of course is employment. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta found that a median income household would need to spend 34.9% of its yearly income on a median priced home. For reference, households that pay more than 30% of their monthly income for housing are considered cost burden, according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And people are burdened because inflation is still outpacing people's wage growth. And you could argue that it's more than just an issue of supply and demand, it's also a problem of affordability. Just take a look at the data on down payments. The Center for Responsible Lending calculated that a typical worker needs eight years to save for a 3% down payment for a medium priced home and 30 years for 20%. It takes the typical person eight years to save for a down payment and 30 years for a 20% down payment on the average house and that's just insane. Now, another reason Elon could believe that housing will go down is because of student loans. Turning now to major developments for federal student loan borrowers out there, changes are coming thanks to the new debt ceiling deal. According to the new plan, payments on federal student loans that were paused at the start of the pandemic would be reinstated as soon as August. It's a tough pill to swallow for the 43 million Americans with federal student loan debt. After three years of being put on pause, student loan payments are starting up again, and this will affect people's debt to income ratios as well as their ability to save for a down payment. 
Now, besides interest rates and the supply, there's a third thing I think people are taking for granted, which is employment. Now, we are told that employment is still extremely strong, but there's a lot of people that don't necessarily believe the data from the government. And I think Elon Musk is probably one of those people. And the more I looked into this, the more I understood why some people are skeptical. But on the other hand, the increase in the unemployment rate is much worse than expected and very significant, as you know, Usually when we rise by half a point from the lowest unemployment rate, it means the economy is going into recession. We just rose three tenths in a month and we're up three or four tenths, no, three tenths now from the low. So in other words, if this isn't revised away, the increase in the unemployment rate is potentially more meaningful than even the continued uh, strength we're seeing in the payroll. So even though the economy added a lot more jobs than we expected, the unemployment rate went higher than we expected too. And that could be a lot more important in what it says about the coming recession. Even the labor growth data that we got was revised to be lower than what it was when it first came out. Now, Bureau of Labor Statistics does this regularly as they collect more data, but the point is the data is not as strong as what we originally thought. And if people start to lose their jobs, they're not gonna be out there buying homes in a recession, which of course would lower home values. So it makes sense why Elon is a little skeptical about the government. Remember what they told us about interest rates and what would happen to inflation. In January 2021, they were not worried about inflation because the buzzword was that it was transitory. In May 2021, there was gonna be a soft landing, but no recession. At the end of 2021, turns out inflation was not transitory, but there's no recession. In May of 2022, a recession may be necessary to stop inflation. November 2022, disinflation started, but no recession. And now in 2023, the recession will be mild. The point is, I don't know exactly what to believe because if those job numbers aren't as accurate as what we were told, then that will have a huge effect on home values. But if those numbers are accurate, then home values should stay steady because there's such a short supply of them. Even though the interest rates have gone up, there still is a dramatic inventory shortage in real estate in almost every city. And according to Barbara Corcoran, she says that as soon as the Fed starts to pivot on interest rates, that real estate values will go much, much higher. But things are changing. The people who are going out there and buying are finding they're overbidding. They're having a hard time getting their hands on the house. And right now, what everybody's afraid of is the high interest rates. But the minute those interest rates come down, all hell's gonna break loose and prices are gonna go through the roof. Well, and all I have to say is, she could be right. If interest rates come back down, there could be a surge in demand to buy. And that could have a huge effect on values and they could skyrocket. It just depends on what timeline of events we go with and what the expectations are. Personally, besides the obvious interest rates and the supply and demand, which are relatively easy to predict, I think it ultimately comes down to employment and the stability of the economy, which is just too soon to predict for now. But I'd love to hear your opinion. Either way, I hope you focus on your own investment journey, regardless of what happens, ignore the noise, and as always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below, and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.